What do you think the greatest command God ever gave us was? Well, according to Jesus, it's to love God and to love other people. We're going to begin to start talking about how God's kind of love can flow through you to other people. And this will really help, so stay tuned for the Gospel Truth. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that emphasizes God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm going to begin a brand new series that I've entitled God's Kind of Love Through You. And this is basically just talking about how important it is for us to walk in love with other people. And you know, there's many reasons for doing this, but one of the reasons that I kind of save this to teach at this time, right after Thanksgiving and going into the Christmas season, is because... During this time of year, we do a lot of things with family. We have relatives come in. And, uh, you know, really, it's one of the most trying times of the year because you're trying to interact and have relationships with people that you consider your family. You love them. You want to get along. And yet, really, uh, it's kind of hard. You put people with totally different, um, you know, drives, totally different uh, focus for their life. You put them together and there's a lot of contention. There's a lot of strife. And I think that this will serve you well during this period of time to just talk about how you can love other people, how you can get along with other people. So I think it's timely. And of course, it's timely all of the time because our relationships at work, our relationships at church, your neighbors, whoever it is, life is a series of relationships. And, you know, when people reach the end of their life, I've heard many people ask this question, surveys done, and when people get to the end of their life, very, very seldom do people say that they wish they'd have had more money or bigger houses or more cars or things like this. But what they always do is go back at the end of their life and say they wish they'd have spent more time focused on relationships. Relationships really is what life is all about. I mean, you can take... Uh, Financial loss, you can take all kind of things, but relationships are the most devastating losses that we have. And yet I, would, I don't think that very many people would challenge me on this to say that we have uh, probably worse uh, skills in relationships than we've ever had in our history. People are spending so much time doing all of these other things, and really relationships are failing. A large part of it is just because of a lack of commitment, a lot of... A lot of it goes back to a lack of effort put into it. So anyway, I say all of these things just to say that I believe that this is a timely series. And as we talk about how you can love other people, how God's kind of love can flow through you to other people, I think that this is going to be very beneficial to you regardless of your individual situations. This is something that you can use every single day of your life. So the very first thing I want to do is just establish how important it is to have God's kind of love flow through you. This is really what it all boils down to. So let me share some scriptures with you on this. This is out of Matthew chapter 22. This exact same instance was recorded in uh, Mark chapter 12. But in Matthew chapter 22, beginning with verse 35, it says, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, of course, this scripture says that this lawyer was asking him this question, trying to trip him up. It wasn't a sincere question. They were trying to find some way to accuse Jesus and slander him and discredit him in front of the people. But it brought out one of the greatest responses. I, you know, just in my study of the Word, and I have read the Bible who knows how many hundreds or thousands of times. I don't know. I've studied the Word a lot. And if it hadn't have been for Jesus' answer right here, if somebody was just to come up and ask me, what is the greatest commandment in the law? I'm not sure that I would have come up with the exact same response that Jesus did. This was a masterful response. I mean, it shows the insight, the wisdom that Jesus had to summarize all of the Old Testament law in loving God 
and loving other people. And over in James chapter 2, let me just turn over and read this passage to you. Uh, Jesus taught on this a number of times during his earthly ministry. And then after his resurrection, uh, James, who was the half-brother of Jesus, came along. And he said in James chapter 2 in verse 8, it says, If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. And so later on, after Jesus had established that loving God and loving other people is really what all of the law is about, it was boiled down and it was called the royal law, which I believe that the reason it was used this terminology, the royal law, is because royal means that it's kingly. Or, in other words, it's just a way of stating that this is the most important, the highest, the most uh, important of all of the laws is just to love other people as you love yourself. And so Jesus brought a brand new twist on this. Of course, in his religious system, people were caught up into all of these rituals. They had at that time probably the dominant uh, commandment that they enforced and that they, you know, it was just non-negotiable was this uh, commandment about circumcision for all the males. They had things about how many steps you could walk on a Sabbath day. They really were into the observance of the Sabbath and they were into all of these rituals and I guarantee you, if you would have asked the average person, what is the greatest thing? They wouldn't have talked about loving God and loving other people. But that's what Jesus boiled it down to. That was the message of the New Testament church. That's what the Apostle James was saying. And you know, this is supposed to be the greatest thing. Matter of fact, Jesus said this over in John chapter 13. This was the night before his crucifixion, right after they had had this last communion and the Lord's Supper. He told his disciples, he says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. And Jesus elevated love as the supreme test that the unbelievers would be able to tell whether we were his true disciples by whether or not we loved one another. And so through this question that was asked to Jesus from that time on, all of his ministry, and then the New Testament church has adopted this, that love is the greatest of all of the things that are in the Christian life. Love, of course, for God, but then God's love flowing through us towards other people is the greatest thing. It ought to be a focal point. And yet today, in many ways, the religious church has evolved downward back to a situation that it was very similar to when the time Jesus was walking here on the earth. We have denominations that are sitting here and they are, um, I mean, doing things in the name of the Lord, criticizing people. I just heard a call-in show this week. I was driving down the road and I was listening to a Christian radio and a guy called in and he had been excommunicated from the church because his wife divorced him. She had been living in adultery and she divorced him. And uh, she was unfaithful to him, divorced him, went with this other person, and the leaders of the church came and kicked him out of the church for being divorced. And he was kind of heartbroken over this, and what do I do? And the guy that was on the radio said, you ought to be rejoicing. And the guy said, what? And he said, you ought to be rejoicing. He says, it's wonderful that they kicked you out of that church. He says, the only thing bad is that they had to kick you out. You should have left a church like that. And yet there are people today, see, that aren't operating in any love, any compassion towards people. They just, they've got their rules and their regulations. And if your dress isn't the right length, if your hair isn't a certain length, if you, do, don't, if you wear gold or jewelry and you know, all of these religious things today, people have put so many things above walking in love towards their brother and sister. And yet Jesus said the greatest of all of these commandments is love. Love for God and love for your fellow man. It says that uh, this is the royal law, the one that ought to be the highest in authority and command. It ought to occupy the highest place. Jesus said this is how all people We'll know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. And yet we've got people today that think it's their clothes. It's the way that they don't go out and do this and this. It's the way that they picket. It's the way that they protest. It's the way that they boycott. They've got all of these other things going. But I'm telling you that our love 
the supernatural ability that God has given every born-again person to express love towards other people is the greatest tool of evangelism. It's the greatest testimony. It's the greatest witness that we have. And so we're beginning this series talking about how to let this God kind of love flow through you towards other people. And I think that this is going to be very beneficial to you. Now, I am going to take a break. I'm going to have my announcer share with you again about how you can get this album that we're talking about. There's nine teachings in it entitled God's Kind of Love Through You. And then we're offering this Gospel 5 pack again where we offer the uh, uh, different teachings on love along with the book on spirit, soul, and body and also the true nature of God. So please listen as our announcer gives you this information and I'll be right back after this break. Andrew's nine-part teaching titled, God's Kind of Love Through You, is available on CD for a gift of 30 pounds or more. The first individual teaching in this album is available on CD for a donation of three pounds or more. But for those unable to send a gift, Andrew and his partners will provide this first teaching free of charge. Or you can receive the full album as part of the God's Kind of Love five pack for a gift of 60 pounds or more. The five-pack includes God's Kind of Love Through You, God's Kind of Love To You, and God's Kind of Love, The Cure for What Ails You. Two companion books complete the five-pack, The True Nature of God, and Spirit, Soul, and Body. Request the God's Kind of Love five-pack when you write, call, or go to our website. We hope to hear from you today. And now, Gospel Truth Continues. So we're beginning to talk about how to let God's kind of love flow through you towards other people, how to get along with other people. And basically, the first thing I'm wanting to establish is just how important this is. I tell you, this hasn't been a priority. It hasn't been a focus with a lot of people. There's so many people that, boy, they are just adamant about that they're going to pray, that they're going to do all of these things. They are into a million different things, emphasis, you know, and in their right place, all of these things may be good. But we've got to establish priorities. Love has to be an overriding factor in your relationships with people. There are some of you that wouldn't dare go out and fellowship with somebody because they are worldly or ungodly and you wouldn't taint yourself or soil yourself with them. And yet, you will sit there and treat them badly and not express love because you've put something else ahead of that. I'm saying that love ought to be an overriding factor. You know, I was at a meeting one time. This was in Corpus Christi, Texas, and this is back when I was only on radio, and people didn't know me except for my voice. And so uh, it was just my wife and I that would travel to these meetings, and uh, we would stand behind the tables and dispense the product. We would greet the people, and of course, people didn't know what I looked like. And it was always interesting because people didn't know who I was until I actually got up and started ministering. I would be at the back, I would be running the sound and all of these things. And I got some really unique reactions from that. But one of them, I remember this lady one time that she was on the back row right in front of where I was running the sound booth, and my wife was up doing the praise and worship. And so anyway, she didn't know who I was. And this woman had her hands up and she was worshiping God. And, uh, you know, I don't mean this, I'm not trying to be judgmental or critical, but I'm just saying that there was a lot of things about this woman that didn't conform to actually a real strong commitment to the Lord. She was wearing this skirt that was so short that when she sat down, she couldn't sit on her skirt. And she had her little girl next to her, and when she had her hands up, this little girl could just barely reach her skirt, and she was pulling on her skirt and going, Mommy, 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 and she was bothering this, this lady. And anyway, this woman, I was back there watching all this go on, and this woman was trying to ignore her. She had her hands up in the air just worshiping God, supposedly. And this little kid was pulling on her skirt, mommy, mommy, mommy. And finally, I mean, this woman just turns around and slaps this kid right across the face and says, shut up, kid. I Can't you see I'm worshiping God? And she went back to worshiping God, supposedly. And uh, you know what? I might not should have done this, but when I got up, I just couldn't help but point out uh, the inconsistency here. People are saying, oh, but I'm so passionate about God that you're going to slap your little kid across the face and you don't walk in love. 
You know, there's so many scriptures. I'll be bringing some of these out as we go through them. But over in 1 John chapter 4, it says that if you say that you love people and yet you don't love God, then something is wrong here. It says if you say that you're, you're loving God and you're in this relationship with God and yet you don't love people who you can see, how can you say that you love God whom you have not seen? In other words, it's making a relationship here. You can sit there and say that you are really loving God and that you just have a wonderful time with God, but if you can't get along with people... Now, again, this has to be taken in its context, and I'm going to be talking about this in more detail, so I'll just mention this in passing. Jesus was rejected. Jesus had people mad at him, and he said that if they've called me the master of the house Beelzebub, then don't you think that they're going to do the same thing to you? It says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, all those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So I'm not going to say that you get along and everybody just loves you. But I'm saying it this way. If nobody loves you, if you can't get along with anybody, and yet you're one of these people that is so religious and so passionate and you just love God and you spend hours studying the Word and you spend time praying and you do all of these things, but if you can't get along with anybody, if it seems like that every person around you just when they see you coming, they go the other direction, I'm telling you something is wrong in your life. Because if you truly have God's kind of love in you, it will flow through you towards other people. And this ought to be a priority in a Christian's life, is loving other people. You know, I went and bought some uh, grain yesterday uh, that I feed these animals with. And at the feed store, I was just talking to the lady that sold me this. And we got to having, you know, pretty good relationship. And just talking and laughing and carrying on and just being polite and kind about things. That's a small thing. But, you know, at the same time, if you're a person that you just can't, you can't interact, you can't visit with anybody. You know, I guess some of this is maybe a southern thing. I was raised in Texas, and I remember one of the first times I took a group of students with me down to Louisiana. We were in the panhandle of Texas. I went in and bought some. I paid for the gas that we had bought. And I mean, I was just laughing and cutting up with this girl that was behind the counter, and we were acting like old friends. When I got back out to the van, they said, did you know her? And I said, no, I'd never seen her before. And it just shocked some people that you could sit there and have fun and laugh and have a good time visiting with a person that you'd never met before. And again, I don't want to present this as it's only a cultural southern type of things in the United States, but I believe that that is a godly type of thing. God's kind of love, you know, it doesn't take much effort for you to just reach out and say something nice, be kind to some person. Just say something that will try and bless a person and make their day a little bit better. I believe that if Jesus was walking here on this earth again in his physical body, I believe that Jesus wouldn't just let a waitress at a restaurant just sit there and talk to them and treat them like trash and demand that you do this and reheat this and you do this. I believe that Jesus would show love towards the people that waited on him and served him. And the point that I'm trying to get across is as we begin to start talking about God's kind of love through you, you need to recognize that this is not an option. This is the greatest of all of the commandments. This is, this is what everything else hinges upon. All of the law and the prophets basically can be contained in love God and love other people. This ought to be normal. Jesus said, this is the distinguishing characteristic over in John chapter 13. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. Let me just ask you this question. If you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Would there be other people that would come around and say, you know what, this person really did show me the love of God. Man, when I was having a bad day, instead of just making it worse, and dumping on me, this person was kind to me. This person did this. You know, Jamie and I, when we go out to eat, just this last week we ate somewhere and we gave a person a tip that was nearly as much as our entire meal was. And it's a small thing. It wasn't but like a $10 tip. It wasn't, a, I mean, it wasn't a fancy place to eat or anything like that. But you know what? This woman, she's usually a lot nicer than what she was this day. But we asked how your day is going, and she said, oh, okay. And I said, it doesn't sound like it's very good. And we tried to encourage her and 
build her up, and she was, I don't know what was going on, but she was having a bad day, and uh, she was the only person waiting in this restaurant, and there was lots of people in there, and she was just overwhelmed, and so anyway, we tried to be nice to her, and finally, we just gave her like a $10 tip, which was, I think our bill was only $12, is all that it cost uh, for us to eat, and you know what? It, she just, it really brightened her up, and she says, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. It's a small thing. I'm not saying that that's a huge deal, but I'm saying that, you know, you could just bless people. Are you thinking about ministering to people? You know, I remember another time that I was out with a group of pastors, and it was like uh, 12.30 or 1 o'clock. We went to a truck stop. It was after a church service, and there was four of us. We were all preachers, and this lady came to wait on us, and she was polite. There wasn't anything wrong. She, I'm not saying that she was... Uh, acting badly, but I just perceived that this woman was having a hard time. And I tried to talk to her, you know, when she came and took our orders, and she was busy, and she didn't spend a lot of time. And, of course, with, when you're out with preachers, y'all fight over who gets the check. And so uh, the way I did it, I just got up and excused myself like I was going to the restroom. And what I did was ask this waitress for our bill, and I forgot what the bill was for four of us. It was like 20-something dollars. And, you know, I just gave her a $50 tip for um, that meal. And, boy, I, I hadn't sat down very long, and this waitress came running over, and she says, oh, you made a mistake. You meant to give a $5 bill. You gave a $50 bill. And I said, no. I said, I just felt like God wanted me to do that just to let you know that he loves you. And this woman just looked at me for a while, and then she broke down crying, and she told us she had been through a divorce, this was her third job. She worked three jobs a day trying to make ends meet and keep her kids going, and she was just stressed out. And just to have somebody tell her that God loved her and blessed her. It, she broke down. She sat down with us. We got to lead this woman to the Lord. She got born again. You know, that's cheap. Man, I spend millions and millions and millions of dollars being on radio and television trying to reach people. I guarantee you, $50 to see a person born again in their life, turn around with God, it's a small thing to do. And, you know, I don't do this near as well as I should. I've got some other friends that I, they just live. They constantly are out there looking for a way to show love to other people. I remember one of my friends, he carries a $100 bill with him every day. He always keeps an extra $100 bill. And in the grocery line or in something else, he just looking for opportunities to bless somebody. And he had a woman one time that he paid her entire grocery bill. And this woman was just so overwhelmed. She had actually forgot her uh, checkbook or something and had left it at home, was going to have to leave her groceries and come back. And so he just paid. And anyway, he got to talk to her and lead this woman to the Lord. You know what? This is what Christianity is all about, is just God's kind of love flowing through you to other people. So we're going to start talking about this and giving you some insights, I believe, that are going to help you tremendously to just manifest God's love through you towards other people. And I think this is going to help you. So I encourage you to listen to our announcer and please take advantage of all of these materials and then join me again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth. Andrew's nine-part teaching titled God's Kind of Love Through You is available on CD for a gift of 30 pounds or more. Request album T1055 when you write or call. The first individual CD in this album is available for a donation of three pounds or more. But to those unable to send a gift, Andrew and his partners will provide this first teaching free of charge. Request CD number TG14 titled, The Greatest of These is Love, when you write or call, and we'll be pleased to send it to you. Once again, I would just like to encourage you to take advantage not only of this teaching that I'm beginning today about God's kind of love through you, but we have three teachings on God's kind of love. I've entitled it God's kind of love to you. That's what I taught on last summer. Then this teaching that I'm doing now is God's kind of love through you. Then I've had a teaching out for a number of years entitled God's kind of love, the cure for what ails you. And then I've also put with this two books that are really complementary to all of these things that we're saying. And that is Spirit, Soul and Body book. And then also the true nature of God. Please listen as our announcer gives you that information. Our address is AWME, 
That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. Or you can use your credit card to place an order by telephone. Our telephone number is 01922-473-300. We also want to remind you that you can receive this album as part of the God's Kind of Love 5-pack for a gift of 60 pounds or more. The 5-pack includes the CD album, God's Kind of Love Through You, plus God's Kind of Love To You, as well as Andrew's classic 3-CD album titled God's Kind of Love, The Cure for What Ails You. Two companion books complete the five-pack, The True Nature of God and Spirit, Soul, and Body. The catalog value of the five-pack is more than 85 pounds, but we make it available today for a gift of 60 pounds or more. Request the God's Kind of Love five-pack number T4503. Thank you for your gift today. I'd like to invite you to come join and be a part of our Caris Bible Colleges. I tell you, we are teaching these exact truths that I'm sharing over television. We are sharing them in much greater detail. Plus, you get the interaction of all of the instructors and, and just so much more. Uh, our Caris Bible College is a tremendous way of God just transforming your life. And we not only have our main campus here in Colorado Springs, but we have schools in Chicago, Kansas City, Dallas, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, Atlanta. We have overseas schools in England, Ireland, Russia. There's many ways that you can take advantage of this, including distance learning. So please call the number that you see on your screen. This is Andrew Womack, and I'm coming to the Clearwater area for a three-day seminar. I'm going to be holding it at the Bellevue Biltmore Resort in Clearwater, Florida. It's going to be a great time on January the 3rd through the 5th. Charlie and Jill LeBlanc will be with me as well as Jamie. We have special room rates. You can go to our website at awmi.net or call the number on your screen for our Gospel Truth Seminar January the 3rd through the 5th. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for more Gospel Truth. One of the ways you can tell if they are truly born again is that they will have this love, God's kind of love, and compassion flowing out of them towards other people. If you don't have that in your life, you know what, you need to seriously consider whether or not you've ever been the recipient of God's kind of love. You may know about it, you may know that it exists, but are you a possessor of it? Because when you get full of God's kind of love, I guarantee you it affects the way you treat other people. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink because in so doing, you'll heap coals of fire upon his head. I don't believe that this is meaning you're going to hurt him, but rather it's going to be conviction. It's just like, man, I guarantee you, if you were to put hot coals on top of somebody's head, they'd know it. They aren't going to ignore that. I guarantee you, you're going to get a response out of them. And when you start loving other people and letting God's kind of love flow through you to other people, it's going to be like setting a hot coal on somebody's head. You will get a reaction. That's tomorrow on Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack.